During the Carbon Age, about 300 million years ago, there lived incredibly fascinating animals. Very different from how we know them today. One of these fascinating creatures was Meganura, also called Giant Dragonfly. Today's dragonflies look like miniature models compared to Meganura. According to today's research, Meganura was not only the largest dragonfly, but also the largest insect in the history of the Earth. But more about that after the intro. Although Meganura basically looked like today's dragonflies, it was part of a different animal subfamily. The name Meganura literally means large vein. The naming means the complex wing structure, which looks like veins on the found fossils of the insect. The first fossil of the giant dragonfly was discovered in 1880 in France. Later more discoveries followed in the USA as well as in England. Just by the way, at Harvard University you can go and see the fossil remains of the Meganura. So if you happen to be nearby, you can also marvel at the fossils up close. Like today's dragonflies, the Meganura was also a carnivore. However, with such a size, it was much stronger and more dangerous. It is assumed that even as a juvenile, the giant dragonfly was solid in terms of hunting. As a young specimen, it probably ate smaller amphibians or aquatic insects. But as a juvenile, it was still extremely vulnerable. Even as an adult specimen, it had to be wary of primitive sharks, amphibians, or reptiles. But in the air, fully grown, it probably did not have to fear any, or at least not many other animals. As mentioned earlier, according to current research, Meganura is considered the largest insect in the history of the Earth. Scientists assume that the giant dragonfly could reach a body length of up to 50 centimeters and a wingspan of up to 70 centimeters larger individuals could possibly even become a bit more brute. Just for comparison, the largest dragonfly living today is called Megaloprepus coerulitici. It can reach a wingspan of up to 20 centimeters however, its physique is incredibly thin compared to Meganura. Meganura had a much stronger and broader physique. Some people might think that we are lucky that giant dragonflies no longer exist. With such a size, it would not be surprising if the carnivorous insect would also hunt us from time to time. It would certainly not be a pretty sight to be pursued by a 70 centimeter dragonfly. Adult humans would most likely not have to fear for their lives, but for small children such a dragonfly could indeed be dangerous. But why did Meganura become so big? There are three theories. Meganura was not the only giant insect during the Carbon Age. There were a variety of families with giant insects. One example would be the family of Paleodictyoptera. This family consisted of many giant insects. As an example, one can take that Megarachne, which translates to large spider. This animal also lived during the Carbon Age. Initially, the Megarachne was considered the largest spider of all time. However, its classification was later revised. Today, scientists believe that the animal was much more of a giant scorpion than a giant spider. Megarachne could reach a body length of about 35 centimeters and a leg span of 70 centimeters but let's get back to the three theories that try to explain why the Meganura was able to grow so big. According to the first and also best known theory, the giant dragonfly grew so big because the oxygen content in the air was much higher then than it is today. In the carbon age, the oxygen content was estimated to be about 35% high. Today, however, the average oxygen content is only about 20% high. The 35% oxygen content during the carbon age is considered to be a probable record high in the history of the Earth. Many invertebrates, including Meganura, were able to survive because of the higher oxygen content in the air. Unlike mammals such as humans, dragonflies do not breathe through their lungs, but through complex pore systems that run through their bodies. With the increased oxygen content, the insects were thus able to become much more ferocious. Many other insects at that time were much larger than the versions living today. And when the oxygen content in the air decreased, so did the size of the insects. There have also been several experiments in which insects have been artificially exposed to a higher oxygen in a controlled environment. The results were astonishing. The result was that the animals changed after only a single generation and had almost doubled their size. The oxygen theory now seems the most plausible. 
By the way if you like this kind of video feel free to leave a like and follow us for more videos of this kind. We would like to reach 1000 subscribers finally. Another theory as to why Meganura was able to grow so large is that the giant dragonfly was able to do so because there were not enough hunters in the air at the time. There were also a variety of smaller creatures that the giant dragonfly could feed on and not face strong competition. So when the giant dragonfly reached full size for the first time, it was essentially untouchable in the air. The third and somewhat less accepted theory claims that Meganura grew up in the water at a young age. At a later age, it was able to grow faster and larger. While it is indeed possible that Meganura spent time in the water as a juvenile, whether this resulted in a growth spurt is questionable. Therefore, the oxygen theory is the most widely accepted. But the lack of competition in the air may have also contributed another part to Meganura's size. Over time, the oxygen content in the air decreased. About 250 million years ago, it was not as high as it was in the Carboniferous era. At about the same time, the size of insects also decreased. In addition, over time, other capable aerial predators evolved that could compete with Meganura and become dangerous to it. This means that not only was Meganura hunted in the air, but there were fewer marsupials for the giant dragonfly to eat. Unfortunately, we do not know exactly from when to when the giant dragonfly lived. The analyses have only shown that the animal must have lived about 300 million years ago. But when did the first individuals of the giant dragonfly appear? Perhaps 350 million years ago. And when did the species become extinct? Unfortunately, we do not know exactly. This is only a matter of time. This is only speculation. Hopefully, more fossil remains of the giant dragonflies will be recovered in the future. This could show us more exciting insights into their life at that time and might even allow us to precisely date their time epoch. It would certainly be fascinating and at the same time frightening to witness such a large dragonfly up close. It is possible that the oxygen content in the air will increase again over time. This would theoretically lead to a return of giant dragonflies. But this could take millions of years. So if such giant dragonflies do indeed return, it is more likely to be through scientific progress. We can already effectively grow insects in a controlled environment. With rapid and exponential scientific progress, we could be growing such a giant dragonfly in the laboratory soon. But exactly when that will be remains to be seen. And will such experiments even be tolerated by the public? What if something goes wrong? What risks are therefore associated with the artificial breeding of giant insects? The future will bring answers to all these questions. If you are interested in more exciting videos about prehistory, you can tell us your video ideas in the comments. You can also subscribe to this channel if you don't want to miss anything in the future. See you next time.